just after six o'clock, and then call uh, the regular select board meeting to order. It's August 1st, um, and it's not raining, so that's good. Uh, uh, first thing is to uh, set, adjust agenda. Do we have any changes to the agenda tonight? Anyone? Nope. All right, we're gonna roll with what we have. Next communication from the audience. Audience is a little, uh, thin. a little thin on the ground tonight. Uh, next, uh, select board to approve minutes from last time, which was July 18th. I can motion to approve the regular select board meeting minutes of July 18th. Uh, we have a second. A second. All right. Uh, I thought they looked good. Any discussion? All in favor of approving the minutes as written, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Um, Next is town manager report given by David Upson. Um, so a lot of the stuff that I've been working on is further down in the meeting agenda. Um, basically the last couple weeks I've been communicating and coordinating with the road foreman, getting roads open back up, getting, finding out what we need um, for a lot of the bridges, uh, talking with the state bridge inspectors. Um, getting uh, a quick RFP out for a request for bids out for Riverside Farm. Um, trying to figure out a plan of attack for Fisher Poly, which I can, I'll defer to the road foreman on that. Um, so just flood flood recovery stuff. Uh, working with our zoning administrator and uh, flood plan manager, or flood plan administrator to work on the, this document um, that you'll be presenting tonight. So. A lot of planning, a lot of looking ahead to the future and trying to figure out the best plan of attack. And prioritizing our moves. Great. Yep. Um, Where is Riverside Bridge? Where is it? It's, yeah. it's right in the river. Was it located right near there? Or yeah, it's, down? Uh, it's right on the edge. Um, right by, right back, dropped right there? No, it's it's that down river on the 16 side. But the uh, the girders, the steel is all bent. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. I just but we're I, gonna grab I've it. I've looked and I haven't seen it. In the, yeah, the yeah. Too. Um, um, yeah, and uh, oh, and also coordinating with uh, Gary Nolan, uh, we had the we submitted our application to be able to blast in the gravel pit dirt for the executive order. Great. Um, we've talked. Uh, I've seen the preliminary. Uh, plans for the Act 250 amendment. So we have uh, a blasting company, which we'll talk about, I think, a little bit later under new business, um, coming in in two weeks, hopefully, to, so we can get some large stone and start using them for rebuilding our roads and, and bridge abutments and bank armoring, all stuff we're gonna need and uh, the material is dwindling fast. St. Jay and Linden have a lot of damage. Yeah. And there's not and a, they need a lot of there's, material there's not a uh, infinite supply of it. You can only make it so fast. Yeah. It, so, and, so every, like and everyone was out. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, I just wanna throw out there that I dropped into the town manager's office a few times in the last couple weeks, three weeks, and um, it's astounding to me how much emphasis, how much focus is on flood-related stuff now. And I was just reflecting back, you know, like three years ago, we had, you know, we had projects. And like five years ago and 10 years ago, we had projects, but we had mostly like the running of the town, like the normal operations, how can we improve? And now it just seems like so much focus is on the flood response and even places where we know we have funding, just organize, doing the project management. You know, you have to put out a request for proposal to get bids, and then you have to review the bids. And anyway, yeah. just want to acknowledge that the town staff is, is doing an awful lot these days. All right. Thank you. Moving on, uh, road foreman report. Uh, another department is doing an awful lot these days. <laughs> oh, let's see. Last time we talked, let's see. Uh, we got the underpass back open, our car, and anyway. So. Oh, up in the bend? Up, up in the bend, yeah, because our end got pretty well washed out and blocked off and everything else. Like that. So we had to dig all that out, and then we had to rebuild the retaining wall. So we got that back and got that car open. Um, 
after we went from there, uh, while we were up there, we ended up uh, armoring up uh, one of the uh, electric poles up, up there for the light department that was down downstream from the river. So we got that done for them. Then after that, we came out from there. I think we had to drive straight to Cape Brook Road afterwards. Uh, we spent two and a half days up there, so you know, like we said, just armoring the banks up there. We probably had eight, nine different washouts in the roadway out there that we had to deal with. Uh, we still got one left by Helen Gates's. Uh, we had a retaining wall that kind of collapsed down the end, so we still have that left to do up there. Uh, this this week, uh, well, before the rain that I thought we were going to get the other day, uh, we installed two bigger size culverts up on Cape Brook Road and ripped up the two smaller ones. Uh, then after we got done out of there, we went to Tucker Brook Road, spent a few days up there, we got that road now back open. We still got the road close signs up, uh, but you can go through, but it's, it's, it's rough. Uh, but that is passable up through there now. Uh, the other thing we did was the granite culvert where it seems all the walk down the road, take up the hill. Uh, we added a, another 32 inch culvert next to that box culvert for overflow. Mm -hmm. And then we have another one just down the road a little bit, another 18 inch that crosses the road. So hopefully that will help us out there. Uh, same thing, uh, we armored some places down through there that needed it. We still got one more spot left on there. Uh, we ended up cleaning the gravel up that was at the bottom that got all washed out. We trucked that over the Smith Farm Road and rebuilt that. Got that back. Uh, today, uh, the grader was out towards Macville Way, trying to fix spots out through there and trying to get road uh, graded back because I know we're way behind on everything, anyways. Uh, then the rest of us, we've been up on Hardwick Farms, uh, dismantling that bridge. Uh, so we've got that all done today and all, all ready to go. Uh, that needs to go back to V-Trans, either Montpelier or it might be heading right over to Lindenville from that location. We're not sure yet. Oh, did that, did that bridge come out more in less than one piece? Oh, uh, they took it out one piece. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So they sat it up on some blocks for us so we could take it take, take, take apart all the way down through. We got that done. Um, talked to Travis today. Uh, I will have two of the eight foot 40 40 foot length culvert for Harvard Farms tomorrow morning. Oh, wow. And then, then the other two sections are supposed to come in maybe tomorrow afternoon, cross your fingers, and then they'll either unload me to either late tomorrow night or early Saturday morning. So they should have all the sections of culverts there. The gravels are planning on working there first thing Monday morning, starting that project there. Uh, Fisher Follies, we can OP uh, talk to the, or OP talk to the, uh, uh, owners up on Fisher Follies Road there to try to come up with a plan for that bridge. So the plan is for that, whether the board wants us to do it or if you guys want to go out a bit, one way or the other. Uh, the idea, uh, I talked to Jeremy from the state of Vermont, was to lift the bridge up out of place, rearmor the banks, build the retaining walls back out, and then pick the bridge back up and set it back in place. Uh, so if we did it, we were going to need a bigger excavator to do this project with just because of the size of the stone and the reach to get over on the other side of the brook. Uh, so we want some idea of what you guys thought is on this, which way you want us to proceed with that one so we can get that done and get, get, get that going. What else? That means we have a lot of other work. And that's it. And then the only road that we don't have open is carry road. And, you know, is he still coming tonight or no? No. No. Uh, no. No. Because uh, I know we have residents that, that doesn't want us to open that road. Uh, they think it's a waste of money rebuilding it and putting it back. But the problem is if we don't, we need to cover up that water line somehow, some way that's in the brook. If not, then they're going to freeze up this morning. Well, I think we should certainly put that one up. You know, we're not going to rebuild that as a priority. I would think. That's our last role to get back. Right. Up. But and I mean, then we start I think, over again. I think we got, we got more enough to do this summer. I think that thing ought to be out of worry about the water line and leave the bridge for another day. We just leave the road closed. We can do that, right? We can, but like I said, Danny, that water line has to be covered. Yeah, that's what I said. We can deal with the water line. So independent. Can we deal with the water line independent of, like, on its own? You can, but you're going to have to dig it up. You're going to have to go get permits. 
go through that brook, drop it down into the brook. Because right now it's right on top. It just right. it just crosses. So the water level is so low right right now, the pipe is exposed. So if you want to leave that road closed as is, you're gonna to have to do something with that water. So I'll put you out, what do we gotta do now? We we just need to fill that back in and you can build and put some stone back, just just like we did before. I, I don't know. I mean, we don't need to be close for any reason. It's just a matter of foot stone and bump it back up, do we? I would just do that. So the box culvert is still okay? The box culvert is still okay. It's okay. It, it, did, it did just like it did before. It washed just washed down around and took the gravel out. Mm -hmm. So why don't we fix it? That yeah, best? we can, I mean, I think that I think that the conversation, I think that our working document uh, is going to be helpful for priorities and where we want to go. Um, but I think we can have this conversation for sure. Um, we've got our first round of, of requests for bids and the, the Hardwick Farms RFP and for engineering out. I think we need to figure out and prioritize what our next steps are for, because the the engineering services are not like we're getting responses now, but we have we have three projects that require engineering. We have um, some big um, hazard mitigation projects that we're going to need engineering for, so we can definitely put it out. I, I would say we do a quick fix and then get an R an RP out for engineering and get a structure in there and don't put any more money into that. Um, Get it to where we can drive on it, where it's open, where we get the water line covered, and then get a get an RFP out for a new structure there. A new bridge structure or yeah. new park. Yeah. Whatever. So it doesn't even need to be a, a high priority. No, no, no. Our next high priority no. right now is Fisher Falls. Yeah. Yeah. Because we have we still have a family that can't right. have a rental car parked on the other side of the bridge. So. Right. As well as Riverside. Well, Riverside yeah, is taking care of that. We're going to take care of that later, Danny. Mm -hmm. So that's all. For the temporary bridge? Uh, we have a we have direct a direction from the state. I put it out to uh, request for bids with the scope that the state wants us to do, and we just have to approve one of the, the bids, and that will be a temporary permanent bridge. A temporary bridge that saves a long the time. The buttons are good. Buttons are good. Yep. Well, yeah, those, those have been inspected. So, yeah, and they're good. Up here. Yeah. They're solid. yeah. There's a one of the one of the sides that needs some work on the bridge seat, the bridge deck seat, or whatever. So, and then yeah, I would say we just band-aid up carry your own. Others, others have thoughts. I mean, I guess my the concern that I heard was like, how many times do we band-aid it, and how much does that cost? And that uh, this came up last year as well. We had to cover up the pipe because it was exposed. Right. So I think it's not going to cost us very much to just fill the road, <clears throat> right? No, we need probably a few loads of stay pack yeah. just to pack around that box collar to make sure the water's not flowing through it. Yeah. And then we start hauling from our own pit with our own gravel up there, or whether it's all the cobblestones up there, just yep. fill it in just fill. and then armor the banks with a couple loads, loads of uh, yep. big rock and stuff. And so the way I figure if it doesn't cost us that much to just do that fix to cover the pipe, I mean, before we know it, it's going to be October. It's just the reality of it. Um, then we can still have the conversation about if we need to take it out altogether, we can. Or if we need to do a bigger bridge, we can. It's not saying one or the other. It's just basically fixing the, right. um, protecting I mean, the pipe. Right. That's been in, on the hydraulic study since last year. Yeah. Yeah. Whether we got anything back on that one or not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It just, we're just going to. Okay. So carry road band-aid. Yeah. <laughs> And then the other thing you were looking for guidance on is whether on the Fisher Falls. Fisher Falls. And so just my first reaction as you were talking is it sounds like you guys have, you've been doing a lot of work, you still have a lot of work in front of you, and you don't, we don't actually own the equipment to make, I don't know, it sounds to me the way you presented it, it makes more sense to hire it out. Right. Um, no. Well, yeah. What are you concerned about time? I'm concerned about the amount of money we've been spending and we're about to spend and our cash flow and the the timeliness of FEMA reimbursements. We untimeliness, you mean? Yeah, the untimeliness of FEMA reimbursements. Um, these will obviously be all new projects 
um, going through the FEMA process. But if, if so, like the clock starts ticking now ish, or when we well, there hasn't been a declaration yet. Mm -hmm. I hear it's coming, still waiting for that. Um, so, no, but I mean, as opposed to like we're still waiting for money for things we did last year, correct? Yeah, we and, have, and this is stuff that's starting now, right? So, we can rest assured we'll that waiting. Yeah. we'll be waiting right. at least a year. <clears throat> so, we have several projects in. In, in the queue to be approved by um, historical preservation, environmental and historical preservation. They're, they're short staffed, so they haven't been able to approve them. We have a couple of RFIs, outstanding requests for information that we're providing to them. Um, and then we've, so we have two big road projects, uh, approximately 150, no, no, no. Four hundred fifty thousand. The the three the two road projects that we have from yeah, last no, storm. No, no. So that should be coming in um, in the next month or so. Um, we have a rented excavator in the pit that we could use for the Fisher Folly project. How many days do you think that work if we can get the crane? And we're hoping to get a crane. Uh, from Mayo's or a crane service to lift the bridge out of the way and set it um, to the side so we can do the work. But that's that's a few days. If we have to put that out to bid, we're looking at you know another 15 to 30 day window for quotes. Wait to see what we get for quotes. Um, yeah. Or we do it in kind. We do it in house. In kind, yeah. Yeah. So your inclination is that, well, so both of you, are, are you both saying that do it in-house? I'm good either way. You're good either way, and you're saying preserve our capital because we're spending a lot of it, and when the road crew has time, they can do Fisher sure Fall. Well, they'll do it and get it done. Right. I mean, last year we put it out to bid, right? We hired we somebody did. else to we do did. it. Yep. Then do you remember how much that cost us? It was a lot. $56,000. Like yeah. And that was to put, um, that was to tear out the old bridge minus the abutments and install the temporary bridge. So we would just be putting together the re reshoring the waste blocks. A lot of the stuff we have already, so we can reuse. And uh, so the cost is the crane and the. Uh, um, Material. And, material. and some material in the rental, but we're going to use the same bridge. We used to be able to go from Fish and Paul, was up in the field and then down on the yeah. 16. I walked it. It can be done, but we have to get permission from landowners and the farmer that's oh, renting the field. Yeah, the, we, we thought about that just to get the truck out, but that's not going to be a winter thing. Mm -hmm. And the family yeah. there has they heat with heating oil. So they no, they, they need a bridge. Yeah. Yeah. That was just sick of this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, they've been, they, they're aware of the, of the time frame. They're aware that it might be a little bit. Um, but I think we could probably do it for about half as much if we do it ourselves. And then we, and then we have less money hanging out there right. waiting for reimbursement. Right. Well, let's decide. Do it. Move on. We have a lot Your call will be. My call? Yeah. All right. We're going to do it. And the roommate are over that? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Great. And if something changes, just let us know. Right. Be careful. Great. Thank you. Thank you for all your work and your crew. Yep. Yeah. Next is the Harvard Police Department report. Mike Henry. Make it fast. Uh, good news is I've got somebody I've been working on, a local person that's in the process right now and uh, coming along as a part-time officer. So hopefully we, uh, we'll have everything set for him to go to the academy part-time in September. But we spend from background through program, through a bunch of other stuff, medical, all that stuff. So uh, just a long process. The big, uh, big thing I'm trying to work on right now is the radio system. 
Uh, I think I brought up already that uh, our, uh, we lost our uh, grant and we're trying to work on that. Uh, trying to figure out whether we can get another grant or something else, but our radios just don't work. Uh, so we've got to figure out a way to get that. And the only way it will work is with this simulcast system. I've talked to several people. I got bids on used equipment. I'm just looking at going that route, but then I talked to other people and they're like, you might as well spend the money, get something that's going to last longer rather than short term fix. So, we're back to the drawing board. Okay. So, all right. That's it. That's right. Thank you. Questions for Mike? Is Marcus Lavage the guy? No, Marcus has gone through the Park Town Academy. We're still working on him. Um, I guess I can throw him in out there. Still down. So, local guy, known as everybody. So, um, part of the rest of the fire department. Oh, okay. Um, so, there's some of the local we have here. You might know him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very fun. Okay. You can do some questions, All right. Thanks. So, Next is item one, select board to consider appointing Marcus Labarge as a uh, Harvard police officer. Let's consider it. Yeah. Make the motion to be appointed. All right. Can I just ask a really quick question? Or can, I can do it during discussion, I guess. Do we have a second? I can sec second that. All right. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, my question, just Mike, is, um, and maybe I missed it, but is Marcus, he's the part, he's part time as well? He's part time as well. But he's gone through the academy. The he's gone through the academy. He's in the field training portion, and there's uh, about 100 hours of other training that has to go after. So he's done the two-week training. Now there's like another 100 hours he's got to get done. Nice. Then he's got to get uh, field training. Of, it can be 100 to 200 hours of field training before he's ready to go. Yeah. So he's in that process. Yeah. Great. Great. So we have a motion and a second. Do we have more discussion? All in favor of appointing Marcus Labarge as a hardware police officer, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you for continuing to recruit. Um, item two, uh, Zoning Administrator Kristen Leahy is here to present the select board with findings of the AARP report of pedestrian safety on South Main Street. I'm not going to go through the whole report. I didn't even bring it with me. <laughs> um, but the Planning Commission did ask that it be presented to you at this meeting because it has number seven just highlighted mm -hmm. is a recommendation for a crosswalk to possibly go. Tom, you probably should be weighing in on this as well. I'm glad you're here. The town manager's office received several calls last fall about how there's no side, there's no crosswalk for the um, area beyond Upper North Cherry Street. So when the planning, uh, OB asked me to have the planning commission look at it, planning commission we did their AARP review, watched the traffic flows and looked at it and came up with Summer Street, which is I think number seven. Yeah, it's the highlighted one. And that is some, the picture reflects where that is. We still would need some kind of identification of a crosswalk, perhaps a flashing sign, another expensive, in, but in the future. But right now, we don't have any, we don't have any crosswalks for the kids who live further up to get over. There's no crowd, there's no sidewalk on that side, and then to cross. It's kind of, it's very busy, and yes. Tom, do you have any thoughts on that? This is, um, I've re received several calls from concerned parents about kids walking to school, mm -hmm. and they, they can't safely cross um, and walk, or walk down um, South Main Street on the southbound side of the road there's just there's no sidewalk and I think in the future we'll have a sidewalk there hopefully but um, we need to look at the crossing there and this is the best this is the best location um, anywhere along that hill <coughs> anywhere along that hill um, is, is a blind Kind of a blind area. This had the best site. Yes. So the people south of that are. It's too close to that that corner. So we're just gonna not worry about that. No, I mean that's something that we can. 
Just I mean, doing I, this, what do you mean? I don't know why this would be a priority. You mean by golf down on Jenny, down by Jenny's, Jenny Girl. Well, yeah. because the request has been for at least one to go in there. This is where they would cross. How do they get there? We got to work on that. Uh, uh, this is the first step, Danny. No. They're walk. They're already walking up the road. For a one. Yeah. I don't understand why we're not dealing with the whole problem. I'm not in the deal. Well, we can't rebuild all the sidewalks that need to be rebuilt to extend well, the road. We would be putting in a new one. Some paint. So, 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 the road. so, is so are you saying? Is the request for painting crosswalks or for redoing the sidewalks painting. or both? Just painting. No, at this point, it is just a request. This is a recommendation. Right. Just a crosswalk is being um, recommended. So right now, it's at just this point. Yeah. Okay. I mean, a um, sidewalk would definitely be oh, recommended. Sure. Yeah, it's and, a definitely. But this is safety we, issue. we use these to leverage information to to go for scoping studies, etc. So that's what you have here. And then, I'm confused. Are you saying that there should be more, or is this so the wrong I'm location? Saying, no, I'm saying there should be one there. There needs to be one down on Jenny Road, and all the parking on the right hand side, yeah. from south, needs to not be non existent. You mean the parking at the new parking site? When I grew up, there was a sidewalk on that side of the road, and nothing's changed except for we allow parking there. Mm -hmm. Well, we don't actually allow it. Yes, we do allow it. It we is. sanction it. We allow it. We let people do it. We do not do anything to stop them. We don't do anything to stop them. No, we gave zoning permits to the house with tenants. They, they parked there. I didn't give zoning permits. They got a handicap thing. Right? I got a picture on my phone of a no parking sign. We know it's a problem. So I'm we're saying we're not going to just put one crosswalk in the rest of the park. Well, so, Danny, this is. One piece of two. The other piece is the existing. I'm working with um, Sean Goodell. I'm sorry, I was working on it when the flood happened, so that has taken um, priority. But I am doing an existing conditions for that segment at, as far as parking goes, and using historical perspectives and working with the fire marshal. So it's going to be an entire. Right, so. Uh, which is what you would ask me for. Right. So are we talking about this from 600? That apartment house? Yes. Yeah, there's parking there. Parking is allowed in the in staff there. But from there up, so, so there's no sidewalk there. Right, there's no parking so allowed. But there needs to be. Well, we always walk it. There's never any parking on that street, including just at, at uh, Curly's house. And it was, you know, in front of the thing. It was off. You could walk between the road and White Right. So, Danny, if, if they're recommending these four spots are you saying you should go ahead and do all four i have no problem with or do more all cross three no, just I, like, I absolutely um, think there needs to be more crosswalks but my i don't know it's just i hate to just put one because i live south of that my grandkids live south of that right my children live south of that we are south of that mm -hmm. <laughs> so and you can't walk you can't well there is sidewalk i don't to tell you that we you know, I ultimately want to see more stop. No, but we don't want to put us. I I get it, but we don't want to put us a, a crosswalk in where somebody's going to get hit crossing okay. the road. So we'll let them get hit where there's no crosswalk and it's okay. No, that's yeah, not that okay either. Sense. That's no, that's not okay. Either. All right, let's move on. All right, um, yeah, my, my argument's been made. Okay, but I think we get it. But I think we do. I, I think I hear a consensus that we need at least. Uh, we agree that. We at least would like a crosswalk at that one location. Um, or would we do that, right? Or do we have to ask the state to, like, we can just say yes, Tom. Yes, yeah. as long as it's an eight, we have to make it ADA compliant. Okay. So, I mean, is there an argument also to Danny's point of if you're going out and you're painting one, doesn't it make sense to just pay? I mean, how are we going to make an ADA compliant? Right. That's the trick. There's no sidewalk. Well, it's easy. Right. You've got a big sidewalk up both ways. And right. The no, fire. Right. Ramp them up. That's what I'm saying. But there's no sidewalk. It's way more than paint. There's Agreed. no sidewalk yeah. on one side. Agreed. Right. But you're asking for go from Summer Street to go across yeah. over to, over there by the uh, graveyard. Is. So from there, if you take that, you that has to be ADA compliant, which means that you've got to go back a certain distance yeah, on each yeah. way. Yeah. And the other thing oh. you got to remember right there too, Verizon or Comcast or whoever, all the telephone companies, they got a manhole right there. That's 
buried that has that takes control of all the you know golf that holds it down that feeds up from that building. So it's not simple. No, it's not just paint on the road. No, no because and then the other side of that side, getting up that side by eighty eight is going to be a nightmare. The whole length of it. Yeah. yeah. No, that whole thing needs to be redone. But and then on the on the west side, there's no sidewalk there, right? Correct. So you're also not landing on a sidewalk on that side. Of your so crosswalk. it could all be resolved by establishing a sidewalk on the right hand side, and they can come down to Cherry and Cops. You could do a. The problem is we don't have a sidewalk on both sides. That's right. The problem. It is. You don't need to cross as long as so you can walk Jenny Road all the way down to the Protestant Church and Cops. That's fine. That's that to me is an excellent solution. The problem is you can't walk down that side of the street because of all the parking. So we could do a quick temporary fix, which would be to paint a sidewalk. Right. Mm -hmm. Paint? Mm -hmm. Yeah, awesome. but the problem yeah. is that people still park. Yeah. So, but you start with that. <laughs> yes, it's been that way. There's white line there now. It doesn't make no difference. So. Uh, I hear you. We can, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to work within our you, budget. Uh, uh, Kristen, you always try to get things done. I appreciate that. And, and if you want to do one sidewalk, go ahead one crosswalk. Well, it doesn't sound like that crosswalk it makes any sense, though, if it, it can't land it. Well, they're not going to be able to get up over the bank very easily. No. That's dangerous. Yeah. And there's no, it's not even wide enough, I don't think. Really. What's that, sidewalk? The sidewalk. Yeah, no, no, that's only like four feet. Yeah, so it's major problems there. Be so maybe a better. So maybe if you paint a sidewalk on the side that they're walking on, they don't need a crosswalk to go across to the sidewalk. Right. I like that idea. Delineate a place for them to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. And I, mean, I mean, it's like those green lines that they use for bikes. Sidewalk. We always, you know, it always used. To, everybody used that. And it's wide enough. It's in the report. It's flat. Mean, it's wide. It looks like it looks perfect for a sidewalk. Yeah. I mean, we could do. We could figure something out. Uh, it is easily plowed. It's great. Right, great. great. All right, we'll take we'll take the recommendations. Yes, thank you. We will take the select board recommendations and comments and put them in play <coughs> to try to solve this problem. That sounds perfect. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Good job. Yeah. All right. And thanks, Kristen. Yes, appreciate it. Thank, uh, thank you. the planning commission, please. Thank um, you did you to do next is Kristen again to give a flood update and potential river request. Can I defer to you? Can you do this? Yeah, Maybe. you. You're over there. Yeah, you. <laughs> we both went through this whole document. Okay. Is this what you sent us? No. Oh, well, yeah. It I was in the packet. Again. It's updated again. Oh, I didn't read this. I haven't seen this. Okay. This is this is our working document. It's a seven-page document. It prioritizes where we're at and where, and where we're going. Huh? Four. Four. I That's made it, it shorter. Oh, okay. So the first Wait, thing, right um, yes. we had numbers on here. Um, I would like to state that my list of priorities goes this way rather than this way. They're all equally important because everybody in the community stands to benefit from them all, okay? Um, the first one here, we have a hazard mitigation pre-application in for um, looking at flood storage and flood benching in the uh, motel property and Hayes service station. Mm -hmm. um, so soil stabilization is included in that. Yeah. Um, and you say we'll lower that so I can a question. Yep. Feel free to, now we're thinking. Feel free yeah. to chime in too yeah. on this. Um, and this is uh, Kristen's done a lot of this work and um, got a lot of these pre-applications in. I've been talking to river engineers and um, higher-ups within state government, um, the NRCS, uh, the Natural Resource Conservation District in Caledonia County. Um, so we're, um, we're going full speed ahead on these planning for these projects. And we have to remember that we have a very large river that comes in east of town and a very large river that empties west of town and we have a very small area where the water needs to go through in our downtown. Mm -hmm. um, so we're gonna start at the problem and even further up in East Hardwick, we have some temporary or preliminary plans there. 
So the second um, Wait, item. Can, can I ask you on the first yeah. one? Yeah. It said that the, the temporary bank stabilization has already happened. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I had it. I haven't seen it. <laughs> after the flood. Yeah. On pace. After the flood, I contacted, um, I met at the site with uh, agent, the secretary of ANR Moore. Julie Moore and had she partnered with VTrans and they were able to put in 100 feet of bank stabilization to stop that bank oh from. Oh God! I wish they put 140 feet in. Yeah, I know. I know. So it's um, me nervous now because now it's going to come right down. They had to. Yes. They had to take yeah. two tanks. Um, they had yeah. to drain one tank out of diesel, uh, take a propane tank out, and there's a serious amount of bank that was lost. My fear is that. Uh, or my concern is that in the event of high water flooding, if that bank gives way and water goes over the top of it, it's going to go right down the middle street. It's absolutely yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah. So this is priority one, or the top priority on our list. The second is um, we had the presentation last week uh, from the river program through MBDA and Two Rivers um, Regional Planning Commission. So they're hopefully going to look at the hydrology and the river going down to the downtown. This picture here is the backside of Mike's uh, service station in, on our main street. It's actually the, the red light side, right? And back yeah. This is the mm -hmm. Peace Park. Yeah. Yeah. This is the river side. Yeah. Yeah. The river side. Right. Right. And the Peace Park. Yeah. 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 So with the... Um, with uh, the widening of the river, the water is moving differently, and the town has uh, the responsibility of that bank on the inside of the curve of the river, and we need to come up with a plan quickly to armor the inside of that bank with a concrete wall. Uh, we can't put, um, or we shouldn't put more fill in that area because, or armor, bank armoring, because we're gonna be making the channel narrower, speeding up the water. Um, so we want to give it as much room as possible. So concrete wall along the inside of the river there. Um, we have Stantec working on this, hopefully. Um, we will need some sort of a, a informal nod from the select board that we want Stantec to keep moving forward with the river program um, so they can keep doing their work. But this is uh, the area in our downtown, all the way down the retaining wall that was damaged last flood um, down stream from this from the pedestrian bridge um, so we're having those conversations with FEMA. And we're, so, oh, we're about directly opposite this where the river is still washing. That's I mean that's ledge. Okay. That's super that's ledge. Good. But, but that's 41 Brush Street. Yeah. That and 41 Brush Street is we're going to try to that is in a buyout uh, application but it's taking way too long. We're going to try to have some higher level conversations with FEMA to see if we can remove that um, structure building before it goes in there. Yeah. Um, just to clarify, okay, so, so yeah. for this project, we're talking about not just repairing that one section of behind no. groceries, but basically from North Main Street Bridge where the concrete is. Yeah. So that, so that includes behind the Centennial building. Yeah. All the yeah. way around. Yeah. Christian Chris, Chris yeah. Square yeah. Manor seat. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. So, so it's not just fixing, it's doing a holistic approach, looking at the entire sure. from like from Hayes, just below Hayes. So yeah. the first the first section you see is Hayes and the town's own the town owned lot, the old yeah. in by the river. And then looking at what needs to happen to protect the downtown. Yeah. So we're gonna give the river more space above, protect in the middle, and then there's another one to give more space below. But it would be going from um, the uh, co-op all the way down through yeah. both sides to the um, Cottage Street Bridge. Not necessarily doing everything right away, but at least coming up with a plan so that we're not inadvertently armoring for for uh, the brochures and taking out Lynn's diner. You know, sure, so yeah. once having you, it yeah. yeah, once planned. you do something one place, there's an effect somewhere oh, of else. Of course. So that's why we're taking the whole picture. And you can see from that other side of the river, from where, where this picture is taken, that there's like certainly things happening yeah. in that whole corridor. Yeah. So yeah. it makes sense. And most of that was walled yeah. with granite blocks mm -hmm. way back. My yeah. only concern, which I'm sure is yours too, is that's a big ass project. It's so, a huge project. So it's different than like, okay, we have this FEMA 
disaster, we get reimbursement for it, we fix it, or we fix it, then we get reimbursed for it. This is like yeah. a very, very expensive, very big, very important project. Yeah. But it's gonna take us a long time to do it. That's why we're gonna start ringing the bell now. Yeah. Okay. We're in the, we've put the pre-application in yeah. for a hazard mitigation grant, and it would be the phase grant, probably. The first phase would be the um, engineering and the design. Second phase would be implementation, and there'd probably be multiple phases to the implementation. Yeah. Multi-year. They, um, BEM loves working with us. We, we know what we, we know what we're doing. We pull projects apart and, and do what they need. So, so we can have the we total package. That, so, yeah. is there a temporary <laughs> fix for brochures in the civic building, or do, or is it just like we have to wait till they are responsible? They're working okay. on temporary okay. fixes, and we're we're working with them with ideas, with people, and um, permits. Permits. I'm helping navigate. Them. The ball, the ball's in their court at this point right now. Um, but we're this is our this is our big this is our big yeah. swing here. Yeah. Um, the third thing is again another hazard mitigation grant pre application has been submitted for uh, town owned property below the Cottage Street Bridge, and this is where the convergence of the Porter Brook or the um, Cooper Brook comes in to Gloomwell, and instead of the river leaving its banks at the sawmill, we wanted to leave its banks on the other side of the river and create a floodplain and flood storage for high water on that side of the brook so we can um, eliminate flooding when the Cooper Brook is looking for room to get into the Lamoille and it doesn't have enough room, it leaves its banks up by Atkins Field and floods Grand Street and Cottage Street. So this is to, this, this part is a big, um, this is a big, also a big, big project, and the rail trail and the Black Iron Bridge are going to be equations in that. Yeah. So we need to look for more water storage, um, and that kind of adds to the fourth bullet, and that is where the water drains, and that is down by the Yellow Barn, the LBRT, the Moore Valley Ford, and our wastewater treatment facility. So basically, the water is leaving the banks at the Cooper Brook, at the Lamoille River, up on that area, and it's looking to get back into the river channel below the Jackson Dam mm -hmm. because there's not enough flood storage in the lake, and then the lake is a whole different project, and we're not going to get into that right now. But if we can get more water on the other side of the rail channel, we can push that water all the way up top into our homes. Yeah. Before. Yeah. It's a lot of storage. Yeah. It's a yeah. lot of storage. There's no yeah. reason that could, that can be achieved relatively inexpensively in the grand scheme of things by yeah. either yeah. lowering the rail trail or putting, yeah. putting yeah. some tubes in or yeah. something. But we were there. Yeah. We were there today, and I've had conversations with V Trans about um, water getting back under the LVRT yeah. um, when it's on the wastewater plant side, right. and th that's a problem. And they're aware of it, and I'm a little surprised that they didn't take out all that wash, uh, that sediment. That they was just, just left it. Yeah, they just left it. So that's, dam. that's a problem. Yep. Um, Kristen wanted to yeah. So this, this particular project would be starting the scoping project. Mm -hmm. And there's funds coming from FEMA in the fall that would, could be um, approached for that type of project. What are you discussing? Before we lose the thread back to your uh, engaging scan tech or, or want to continue that work, yeah. you know, I think we want to continue that work. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. to make sure we give yeah. you the nod. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, no. so, so I think you need a motion actually because it's your, oh. you're actually, so, ri so part of the river, river provides us with this help with doing benefit cost analysis and engineering and budgets, et cetera, but they are looking for the legislative um, approvals of, of the guiding factors, like what are you looking, what's our most important? Well, it's not a blank check, so. No, it's, it's what do you, I mean, um, you should listen to this whole thing and, and see if there's something you feel is more important than what we've identified as more important. Okay. Because that's that's what they're looking for, is what the select board is. All right, so let's carry, we'll continue is, hearing the whole thing. This is a living, breathing document. Yeah. Okay. I tried to reduce it. There's parts you're not going to have to go through. So then we have our wastewater treatment facility. The last conversation I had with our engineers was make a plan, do the cost benefit analysis, and move in the facility. Getting it up out of the way and putting it in the lagoon. We gotta do it. We can't keep putting a million dollars into this thing. 
every time I fly this mm -hmm. We're at seven hundred thousand um, dollars. Our fire station, if we move that, uh, that's a picture of the fire department moving the trucks at two AM. Um, that's when I came down into town on the eleventh this this year. Um, if we move that, we can create more flood storage mm -hmm. uh, when it leaves at Cooper Brook, and we have an RFP in place to move that up to Creamery Road. We're going to start that. That project's ongoing, started and ongoing. Um, you can scroll up. And then we have some flood mitigation efforts, um, basically backflow prevention devices, uh, places for them to pump the water. Uh, in the event of high water. Um, right now they're pumping it and then it goes over into the neighbor's yard and then they gotta pump it from the neighbor's yard into the next neighbor's yard. So we gotta find a place for the water to drain out of that area. Um, Kristen, it was the worst, it was, everyone else had less water in their houses. These people in this area had more. Mm -hmm. It was more because Cooper and Memorial backed mm -hmm. up to them. Mm -hmm. So everyone on Wolcott had less, over on Cooper, the other side of Cooper had less. This section had and some of the residents down there, they um, they purchased a uh, trash pump, and they were able to use it in a bunch of basements. So they community came together down there and yep. had some equipment. They were able to help each other out with. It. And that's the type of grant funding we're going to be starting in the fall. It's um, working with Atkins Field as well to see if they can do something with their granite shed to elevate and allow the water to go underneath it versus just elevate and make another dam. Um, so it's going to be uh, community-based and sustainable, working with natural like, um, sink basins, et cetera, like things to water. I, I mean, I don't know all the phraseology, yep. but it's the, a lot of the community members down there are excited too. And so then the, yeah. the brick funding is building resilient uh, uh, something community. Yeah. Building is in infrastructure and communities or something like that. Yeah. And so are there for the houses down there in the Grand Street neighborhood, are there residents who are interested in elevating? No, most of them are older houses that would not be um, elevatable. Ele elevatable. Um, a lot of them are dry flood proofing okay. down there. Um, Reg Phelps had half an inch of water in his basement and so he's been he's been kind of there. He's the one that actually so they've been working together down there, and they need a little thing. I mean, they're they're doing a lot of the work that is the start yep. down there. Okay. So. And but they have. Of, and I'll honestly, a lot of those houses down there, I would go out on a limb and say, hmm. probably all of them always had needed some Yes, they but did. But but they said that it used to get pumped by the. They used to get pumped to the river or something to that. Maybe, but you know what I'm saying. It's, yeah. It's, so the water table is never in dry. It's, it's yeah, a lot of them have, have they can't installed the sometimes. They, yeah. they do not need any additional. <laughs> They've already got a major bubble. Like Todd, for example, he, his pumps, you know, he's got two stop pumps. They kept up and he stays up all night. Yeah. So then. I'll put them into the neighbor. Keensville Brook, I sent an email to VTrans this week. They're looking at uh, woody debris. You know, I drove by there today and I'm like, you know what? Uh, in the old days, we'd buy a keg of beer and have us a bonfire right there. Um, the uh, stream alteration guy said, go at it. Yeah, so they're changing their tune a little bit on the woody debris because it's damaging infrastructure. Well, that's, I mean, that's a, there's a lot there. What about getting back in the river and start digging them out? We're not going there right now. Like, well, um, they get, those conversations are happening. Huh? At least dig the debris out. That's the, what yep. is up there. Yeah, that's like last year, Danny, when I was talking to the state lady down there, we lost over two, three feet of storage on Oak Street alone. Yeah. By that filling in. Yeah. Now you get no plans for nobody to dig anything else. I agree with you. But anyway, sorry. Okay. You'll find it. <laughs> this is exciting stuff. So is that, so you're saying for the woody debris, if they're saying, go for it, that could be, could that be also in kind, like, no, 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 what I'm saying is folks with excavators in town could basically take, I mean, our little loader can move some, you know what I mean, like, could we basically have areas that are cleared out by, there is so much there, what are you going to do, we're not going to let you burn it. 
No, 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 no. no. I'm just saying, like, that's if you're right. basically okay, so if you're if you live on the river mm -hmm. and there's a bunch of trees, yeah. and there are a bunch of them are in the river, mm -hmm. yeah. this is saying go ahead and clean them out. Yeah. If it's your property. Yeah. I would. Have that's basically right. what I just heard. And that's for right there. That's <laughs> okay. not in the minutes. No, yeah. no, no. I, that's, I'm just trying to understand. So, if it's so like, right there. We're not going to stop you from doing work. Right there is blocking. Right. The problem <laughs> there is it's yeah. nobody's property. Right. It's going to deal with it. It's, a, it's just there. Well, and it's Ann Gilchrist's property. Right? Yeah, but, yeah. So, it's, it's, that is a big Talk to the land. Yeah. But okay. B Chance is, is starting to do this in. Okay. in Probably they made it worse. They in in the areas that are. They made it worse. The day before the flood. It needs to happen before. Because they piled it up. Yeah. Instead of, it needs to be removed. They made it smaller and piled it up. They cut it up and made it smaller. Yeah. Easier to move and put it on the roadway. Well, anyways. And they didn't anticipate it. Yeah. Right. So these are just mm -hmm. um, damaged roads and culverts. Some updates of what the road crew has fixed. Um, you can look at that at your leisure. These are the six bridges um, and their status. Talk about all, we've talked about all the bridges tonight, basically what, what's going on with those. Um, this is our buyout list. Um, 2023. For last year. Um, there's the Brush Street House that we want to try to remove uh, quickly. There's um, the other structure on that property coming down? The garage, yes. yeah, it yeah. would be, but we're not, gonna, we're not gonna take that down now. We'll, we'll wait. Um, and then talking about uh, additional buyouts that have come in, requests for buyouts um, after this flood. And then Vermont Fish and Wildlife is interested in creating more floodplain and river restoration with two, possibly three properties along the Haynesville Brook. Um, we have a... Uh, Haynesville Brook is, follows Route 15, 15 yeah. after... Yeah, after we were just talking about the mm -hmm. uh, Yeah, we were okay. just talking about the bridge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, this, that's a tributary to the Lamoille, well, yeah. right by Route 16 bridge. Okay. Um, and then elevation assistance on properties down on the Cooper Brook um, and the Lamoille River. We have pre-applications in for those. Um, and then our business business businesses that were impacted um, and that were Kristen has been in contact with pretty much all of them so we're just having conversations on how we make them more resilient and stay in business um, so we can continue to have a bustling town and good economic development and those conversations have happened already with businesses uh -huh. so some, some, they were all some. contacted and talked to you personally yeah. But I haven't had the what do you want to do yeah. conversation. They're still trying to figure out. Sure. I mean, the first conversation I had with them, some of them thought they were fine and then discovered they had foundation issues. So, so then it's, it's a process. Yeah. But. And then... Uh, <coughs> Has Walgreens said when they're going to reopen, they have any idea? No, I think Opie is the one talking to that. They have their uh, mobile pharmacy in, but I, I think they're dragging their feet a little bit. Okay. Trying to figure that out. Well, if something's, especially bigger corporations like that, are not going to continue that. Sure. I have a meeting on the 13th yeah, with the vice president of Tops Market for real estate. So I have, I have a sneaking suspicion I know what it's. So you'll know more after that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and then there's three locations along the river, the Lamoille River, that I'd like to purchase backflow, uh, backflow valves on. Uh, Tom got a quote of about $15,000 for those three rubber valves, and that rents water from backing up into the storm drains on Wolfen Street. I thought they did that. There's only one down there. There's, there's one. What happened to the rest of them? They weren't, they weren't installed because of the price. We only ever put in one. Like $5, yeah. <laughs> so they're like $5,000. Make a motion that we do it. I already made the decision. <laughs> 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 So approved. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll get all of those. Yeah. No. You ordered those yet? No. Okay. Um, so pre-application in for banking. We're still working with FEMA on the school street slide. Um, we're hoping 
that I'm thinking that we are able to use once we blast the section of ledge up at the pit, we're able to use that material to stabilize the bank on School Street. We'll be able to pay ourselves to use that material through FEMA project. That is the trick, mm -hmm. is we use our material and pay ourselves for it through FEMA. That's going to be a lot of material. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah we should see where we're, we're, also, we're also in the queue. We're, we're, the queue. we're, we're, we're also in the queue for the hazard mitigation. Yeah. Or if we have to do something different. Okay. Covering all the bases. The watershed study we talked about at a last meeting on Cooper Brook. Um, flood hazard mitigation. Sorry. No, you're good. It's the parcels that we don't own that have asked for buyout or either at, at FEMA or still in the yeah. And then this is just some community stuff um, and some emergency operations center generator at the PD. Long-term community recovery plan we talked about with uh, FEMA working group. Uh, then we're looking to get neighbor to neighbor trained up to be uh, local to do the local emergency management plan and keep that torch going and work on our supply center and our infrastructure to support that. And uh, we have a we have a neighbor to neighbor part partnering with neighbor to neighbor to do a community meeting in September. So to probably roll this plan out a little bit more broadly. There it is. That's it. So, That's it. <laughs> so the um, river program is for several towns, including ours. They don't necessarily have the funding to do more than one for each town, but um, so we're asking them theoretically to do three because we need more three, 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 three programs. Three projects. Help us with three. Get us three are. They're the first. The first three that we oh, identified. So you're, first yeah, okay. so you're, so you're asking us to disagree. Or or disagree. If there's something right, else that you right. feel you're is. For, yes. Well, those are all really connected. So I don't know how you do. As you just said, I don't know how you do the the floodplain work without changing downtown. Without like. The one piece that's in play right now is the, the pre-application for the in by the river and the haze mm -hmm. is um, has already been accepted to go to application stage, so it's in a different point. Okay. It's like it's 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 who gets in the door first. We, I put that application in the day after it opened. It's so I'm good with uh, their recommendation. Yeah. I mean, you're not going to see excavators rolling in next week. No. This is a long-term approach, but we need to get a plan in place, oh, yeah. and we need to, like I said, beat the drum and get people on board to get this stuff prioritized. Yeah, we can have to say that we have select board support. You do. And community support. That's the neighbors in the group. Yep. So, okay. So we could um, to support the uh, river. Whatever System flood resiliency yeah. and recovery plan. Pick that up for me a little bit. Carry that The flood resiliency and recovery plan. Yes. Priority. With the priorities as, as presented. Yeah. Okay. Somebody wants to second I'll that. I'll second that. Uh, we've had a lot of discussion, but is there any more? All in favor, yeah. please yeah. say yeah. aye. 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 Right, so that's everybody. So motion carries. Um, Good job, you guys. Yeah, yeah, I mean, holy cow, it's a lot of work. Can, we, can I just talk about something related to the presentation or related right. to all this? Um, it's like as Eric already said, it's incredible what our staff has been doing. I'm really nervous about our capacity with all of this, and I think we have we have really really amazing people in all departments, but there's only so much that is humanly possible, and it sounds like we're already. Potentially, have work, things are going to be tight money-wise because of all these natural disasters. But I really think we need to think about how we can support all of our departments. Like, do we need to get somebody else in the road crew, yes. even for the next year? Yes. Even to get through all this work, do we need to have somebody else in the town manager's office, even yes. just to get through this work? And that's no. But I think that's up that's to the staff. That's, that's up to us to say we resiliency coordinator position. It's a part-time person that takes a little bit of load off. 
whoever OP thinks is needed. I, I, but I think it's. We, I think we need okay, to. Yes. Yeah. So can I officially ask you, OP and Kristen? You two and, and Casey. Casey is part of this. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and all of you, if you come back in two weeks, I think I would go on record and say I think we need to add some staff for the next year. And, and I don't know if we have to borrow the money. It doesn't matter. We need to have it. We can't do it without you guys. And God forbid you get burned out. It's just you guys keep saying. We'll talk. I think we can talk. I'm about okay. It. All right. Well, I'm also thinking about Tom, and we just added yeah. potentially two pretty big projects to his plate tonight. So I think that wherever, basically, I'm just looking at, at you. I wherever think, you think you might need some people. I think summer employment. Um, I've had conversations with uh, the state of Vermont uh, Department of Labor, getting somebody in here to be able to do the mowing, yeah. do the trash on Main Street. Do like park and rec so kind of stuff. Yeah. It might be time to put a sweat for it inside of the house. But we can we put it in our budget for next summer. Mm -hmm. And I think we've had internal conversations and we've had off, you know, like sidebar conversations about bringing somebody a temp on for road crew stuff. Um, yeah, we could. I would love, I had a grant in place to hire a, a staff engineer uh, to do some of these projects, but hiring a staff engineer comes with a team of engineers. Um, so that kind of fell through, but a uh, project manager, I think is something we're gonna need um, moving forward when we get a lot of these projects kind of uh, off the ground. And I think a project manager could help them move them forward faster. Um, so I, I do agree with you. I think that there is um, places where we could add some personnel to increase our capacity, but I don't want to. I don't want to rush into it and have it be wasted. Have it like hire somebody into the position where you really need it, at a different position. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But it is. It is on the horizon for sure. I. Am upset about it for months. I've been trying to, and every time I talk, talk about it, open down and say no. Christian says no. So, well, we're all check. We're well, also, I think we need to talk about it and for a I know, I, I think, I, 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 do, I do agree with you. I think it's important, but we're also, um, I, I have some fiscal responsibilities. Um, well, ultimately, there are fiscal responsibilities. I'm not sure fiscal responsibilities. I know. I know. And, it's our our job I get it. to make sure that things are done, yeah. you know, the way we feel they should be done. And when we all feel that we need more staff, and I I feel like I that we should take our direction on which more staff. Well, we strongly suggested to please come back in two weeks with that. Yeah, and I still meet yeah, with a great deal of resistance. No, I, there's no resistance. I agree that we need staff. I just want to hear them. Right at, at all levels. So we need, we are behind on everything at all levels with a mounting ahead of us of unknowns and, and workloads that we've never ever seen before as a tap. So I don't know, did you, anyone look at the lawn out front when you came in? Yeah. Look, 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 go, look at the brush. You can't even drive up the floor at Cherry Street. You know, there's just so much stuff in and, and you tonight, Eric, said you stopped in his office and you see how much flood has taken over every single thing they do. That's true. What do you think they all did before we had flood? They ran the town. So who's running the town now? And they're well, all yeah. we are. They are. They still well, are. Uh, you're all superheroes, but the bottom line is shit ain't getting done. Well, that's about. I mean, you're doing a great well, job, but you can only do so much. Uh, but I think you said it really well in that. Where is there the opportunity for something that's not also a lot of management, right? Like, does that mean hiring somebody for the rest of the season to take care of trash, take care of mowing, to take care of sidewalk, whatever? That's like not a super trained up position. Yeah. That's not going to tax Tom in terms of because that's the other thing. Adding people is adding work for managers. Yeah. So, so what is that like tiny low hanging fruit? And then can we just say, okay, let's take out. 15 grand in the general fund to pay whoever that is. It could be somebody to like 
come in and organize files. I don't care. It's up to you. But like, but is there something small like that that's not like a big, big, big position that could just help whatever department it is? I don't know. But so, so of course, now we have got the other one as well. So we can there's also that. instead of so yes. there's so there's there's a thought that we could also hire a contractor to do some sure. of that and spread the love into the business community. Yeah. Oh, um, well, we could hire a contractor to do the trash in the industry. Right. I mean, right. they come and pick it up every day, right. uh, yeah, every other day. At yeah, right. Do you hire the right. yeah. for, That's what I'm saying. For the next month and a half, of course, not like. So I'd like to just. I mean, we still have a fair number of things to get through tonight, and I yes. guess. Um, My opinion is we want to help. I, 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 I so in that. summary, and I appreciate we're it. supportive of what you guys need, and so. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you need to come, if there. If there's small things that are that you, you should just do, if there's things that you need our approval for, bring them back and we'll yeah. be supportive. Yeah. And I with that, that yeah. I think you do. So that's what I'm going to push us on. Okay. Okay. So um, I don't even know where we are. I'll make a motion. Bud Stevens. That we appoint Bud Stevens to the Harvard Planning <laughs> Commission for a three-year term, starting six thirty twenty-seven. And change coal to the first alternate. On the on the uh, planning planning commission. commission. Yeah. Okay. Second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 And any opposed? Motion carries. Yes. <laughs> and then by chance you bud? No. 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 <laughs> there we go. All right, next is item five, so look forward to consider <laughs> cannabis, <laughs> cannabis license renewal for naked hemp. Um, this is a renewal, and we had something in our package, I think. No complaints of Right, right, that's what we had. Yeah. I can motion Good to uh, approve uh, cannabis license renewal for naked hemp. Second. Any discussion? Oh, Here, okay. if you have any questions. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. How's it going? <laughs> How's it going? Good. Uh, How's it going? Good. Good. Good weather this year. Good weather. <laughs> really? It's an outdoor deal. Both. Both. Greenhouse yeah. and out, yeah. outside too. Well, good. Glad you're. Uh, I know there was quite an influx there at the beginning. That everybody was going to be a billionaire. <laughs> There's a lot of empty fields now. A, a lot. A lot of work. A lot of work. Yeah. All right. So we have the motion and the second, so all in favor of approving the cannabis license for naked hemp, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thanks for coming in. Um, next yeah. item six, let board to consider giving a waiver to Harvick Electric for their handicapped accessible ramp to be in the town right away. That's me. And it's already there. Sorry. It's already there. Right? No. What? The ramp. No, they don't no. have it. Oh, they, they don't, don't have it. So they don't have so a they ramp. So they don't, they don't have a ramp. So um, why did they always had a ramp out back? Why, why does it have a ramp? The outback doesn't, it's oh, the they way changed that it's it. designed inside. They, they, can't, they can't take you in. Doesn't yeah. Oh, it's gone. Yeah. No, so they changed I, I don't care. So he has submitted a plan to me that would keep it out of the town's right of way. But my concern is that if he gets, if they get into this project, they have 30 days to do this for the fire marshal. They get into the project and discover that because of the, the pitch of the um, ram, they have to actually swing it and come down towards the road. I want to have them have but that it, ability. But it's not going to impact the sidewalk? No. It's not going to be no. in the road. It's in no. the right of way. No. It's the right of, your right of way goes beyond that the sidewalk. I make the motion that we give a waiver to the hurricane department for the handicap accessible ramp. It may not be needed in charge of just the waiver. If need. Isn't there a if fee? Is there a fee for that waiver? No. Uh, second. Yeah, yeah, so we have a second. Yeah. More discussion. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion aye. carries. I'm, I'm sorry, and who made the motion? I second. Danny. Okay. I interrupted. And Basically. second was okay. you. Okay. Yep. Okay. Item seven, select board to consider accepting a proposal from one of the submissions for the design and engineering of Hardwick Farms Road Bridge over the Porter Brook. So I read the... And the authorize town manager to execute the contract. Okay, there you go. I make a motion that we authorize the town manager to execute the contract. 
for the River Broad Sarah Bridge. Um, with the with the contractor he feels uh oh, he's gonna throw it back. Well so I read a book if you read them, one guy's like a sewer guy. Did you read him? Mm -hmm. And one guy seems to be a younger guy from Vegas. It's proposal was a little yeah, I get to it. And then there was one that was pretty good. So you too, you work well, you know. I do you have a preference? So you, that, you just made that what's motion. What's your recommendation? I make the motion that, that you throw it on the town manager. Yeah. No, what's your preference? I should ask you first. Um, I think the Tyler Billingsley East Engineering um, is based on uh, a, a number of project budget wasn't provided. It's based on a FEMA cost curve. So basically he's taking the cost of the FEMA project um, and he would get a, a percentage of that project. I don't really know um, how that all comes about. Right. It's nothing I really want to deal with. You want, um, we want to. I want to. Um, or whatever. I think um, it's. I'm down to Mumley in New England. So one of them definitely had a lot of wastewater stuff. I mean, they've both done big right. projects, box culverts, and bridges. Right, no, no, I, I'm not yeah. saying they, yeah. they couldn't do it. I, I, think they're, I think they're both, um, I think they're both capable well, of doing this project. We already discussed we have multiple projects coming down the pipe. Yes. So I don't care. And the bottom line, uh, New England Consulting Engineers is 36.5. And Mumley is 25. I think it's 25. I don't know. Uh, well, and he's doing our Act 250 amendment. It's 25-5. So, yeah. were you able to verify their we have a little like, an email exchange? Their references? Like, no, the um, the, yes. their, the, their, uh, the that was the amended cost the budget. That was the amended. Yeah. Okay, because originally they included the cost to do the whole um, hydraulic study. hydraulic study, which we can provide to them. Yes. Okay, and they're. All right. So you think what we have, what you have now, what we have now are apples to apples. They're both providing the same service. Yeah. Proposing to the the difference um, with New England Consulting Engineers is they have a principal engineer, a project manager, and an engineer um, in a drafting tech. So they have a team. Yeah. Where Mumley has two, and I don't know what the workload is for each firm. That's good. Day. Yeah. yeah, they they both say they can complete it for the twenty. I, in my re request, I asked for mm. plans and bidding to be ready for the spring construction season, which I think they can both do easily. Um, so I just don't know what their capacity is. So. And I thought the New England one didn't include all the bid bidding support. It did. It did. Yep. It even okay. it even talked about construction management. Yeah, it's not construction management. But I yeah. thought they, they were. There really is a little bit more in there, likely. Yes. Yeah. And they, they, they created, money. they, you know, their, their proposal is a little bit more detailed. They have a, a budget, or yeah, they have they, a, they a timeline in there. Yeah. That was very, but that very well money is theoretically reimbur that's reimbursed. So, yeah. but we have to pay for it up front. Correct. And this is, so just, this is getting a little muddled for me. So this is, Reimbursed from the flooding from 2025. 2024, sorry. This 2023. Where are we? What? <laughs> Lord, okay. Right, this is the permanent work for the damage right. from 2023. From 23. Right, and again, we're going to have multiple projects. Yeah. Right. No, but I'm just making sure so we all, because we already know for 2023, we already know we have an emergency declaration. We already know that FEMA is reimbursing. Yes. And at what rate? Yeah. So. And the rate is seventy-five percent, and the state kicks in twelve and a half percent, seven and a half percent. We're going to look for a little bit more. Okay. Uh, so you're still with Mumley? I I can go with either. Go with either. I, I agree with everything I've said about the rate. Their proposals, yeah, really good. impressive. Okay. I think the New England one it feels like it's more thorough. Yeah. Like there aren't going to be like hiccups along the way. And oops, it's ten thousand dollars more than we thought. <laughs> you know. 
Perry. Say we've got plenty of work coming down the pipe for our engineers as well. Yeah, I, I, I really think whoever. Are you confident that either of them could do the work and get it done in time? Mm -hmm. Then you choose. I mean, then, I mean, my inclination then is to go with the one that's lower cost. Okay. But I don't know, like. Yeah, hopefully. I mean, I agree that the proposal from New England is a, I don't know. It's a better written proposal. It has more detail, and they're backing it up with more staff in their proposal. But yeah, but that's not how it's good. But it, it, it doesn't matter if they can get it done in, on our timeline. How they do it. Right. They've got enough time for one guy to do it. Right, right now and then. Yep. Yeah. So, so I can motion to approve the monthly uh, Mumley proposal for the design and engineering of the Hardwick Farms Road Bridge over Porterbrook and authorize the town manager to execute a contract for the work. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Vote. Motion carries. Thank so you. So basically, no one ever seconded his motion. So we just throw Josh, that out. Yeah. yeah, it died. <laughs> Sorry, it happens. man. Yeah, it happens. <laughs> and he made a motion and nobody cared to second it. Uh, item E is select board to consider accepting a proposal for the emergency bridge repair work for the Riverside Farms Bridge and authorize town manager to execute a contract. Another bridge. Yep. I didn't see I didn't see any about that. They, they, they came in today. Yeah, they were due in today. Great. So I made them do today. Perfect. So, okay. we could so didn't get them in there. They're in there, but I didn't get yeah. them in But they're not in yeah. yeah. So you're going to present them to us. Yep. Great. Yep. So we have CCS. Um, Constructors, they submitted a bid. Um, they've done a lot of work on big projects. Can you, yep. Can you just give us an overview of what yes. the project is? Yep. So um, the scope of work is to place grout bags under abutment one, which is the abutment on or abutment two, which is the abutment on the Route 16 side. Place grout bags, uh, wet grout bags, underneath the footing of the abutment. Armor the abutment. Uh, abutment one, fix the bridge seat, install four um, girders with spec steel that we spec in the RFP that came from the bridge uh, team, state bridge team. And then install bridge diaphragms, two in each bay, and install two by six. Uh, pressure treated but on end clip yeah, on to edge, the yeah. other. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that was put out in a request for bids. Um, I received three from CCS, uh, constructors in Morrisville, which uh, all three contractors are um, well recommended. Um, CCS constructors, gravel construction and winter set. The lump sum bid for CCS constructors was $184,000. Gravel construction was $212,625. And winter set is $160,000. We have a winner. Um, yeah. It's still a lot of money for bridge like that nowadays. Can I just ask a quick money question yeah. before we jump into this? We don't have enough. Yeah, that was, that's my question. Is yeah. where, like, where are we at? I mean, we're okay right now, but it's in the next few months. Well, I mean, we might start getting in some tax payments. Well, give help. <laughs> um, even with the bank, even with. We have the line of credit. Not, right. We haven't started using the line of credit. Right, um, I mean, it's not good. I mean, that's, that's, if we ever need to use line of credit, it's this year. So we have, uh, we have an abutment, or we have an abutment, we have, we have many abutments, but we have that <laughs> retaining wall project that's, that we got a bid for 2.4, 2.9, um, that we're going to need to borrow money for. We're trying to figure out, we had a, conversation from with FEMA today about it. They're not thrilled about the number. They had a cost estimate of five hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> and they're that. like, yeah, well you've got a lot of explaining to do why all of a sudden it's two million dollars well, more. Or whatever. 
Right. So, um, I'm flying one and I'll be arguing with them on that. Yeah. For a while. Yeah. Because they're like insisting that um, we're doing upgrades. Well, I don't know. They only want the back exactly the way it is, and that's all they're going to pay for. We weren't better up there, so I, I don't understand a lot of the problem. When you're not better up, when you're not better up, you're not better up, right? So, it should be easy to. The micro piles are. What the I engineer is calling, what that's, all about. that's what they're calling for, the micro piles, and they're very, very expensive. Right, but I don't understand why you need them. Bedrock, bedrock. Yeah, well, we can have a re-engineer. You know what I'm saying? I just, well, yeah, we, we have, have to understand. Yeah. What is that you get to bedrock, let's, let's not get sidetracked. Yeah. So, all right, so, so I'm monitoring our kids. cash on a daily basis. <laughs> <laughs> Leave me, like, Sheezy, sure. let's um, be now. <laughs> yeah, I'm not worried about our kids. I mean, we're okay right now, um, but as I explained to him, I do feel like we're bleeding money, like yeah. just. Oh yeah. Well, we are. I mean, our we're accounts payable budget. runs so are, it's... you know, when it's a payroll week and it's an accounts payable, it's nothing for us to pay off six hundred thousand dollars every two weeks. Like it's that was the last week we run and payroll like two weeks ago was like six hundred thousand. I mean, it's almost all it's, on budget and things. So yeah. We are and then of course we have all this flood work. Um, that which he wanted me to update. For example, we've already oh, spent. Yeah. Um, oh, missed, so it's about seventy-five thousand on roads, but I know there's more invoices to come. At least another probably twenty-five grand. So that's a hundred grand. We've paid out seventy-five with more to come. Um, the wastewater plant we're at. I think only 15, but we have some big invoices out there pending, um, stuff that we're going to have to replace. Um, so yeah, it's, um, we dodged a the money is going out fast. fast. Yeah. It's going out fast. I make a motion that we uh, authorize the time manager to the contract with winter set construction for the mm -hmm. Riverside Farm Strip. Second. More discussion. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, that's everyone. So motion carries. And uh, well, also just thanks to shout out. Thanks to everybody for bidding on that too, because we really need we need it. And like Danny said, we got lots of projects. Please keep bidding. Yeah. Um, it was definitely nice to see three bids because we're not used to that. So mm -hmm. many projects have had Lately. zero uh, or none. Winter or set, I mean zero or one. Being on route two, like Monday and Tuesday before the last flood. Winter set moved all day long, all their equipment, you know, down route two. Mm -hmm. And then the flood hit. And they tried to chuck it on the back of them because they couldn't even get to their own place. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah. There's a lot of that going on. Mm -hmm. All right, next is item nine, select board to review and consider approving the sale of real estate policy. So I want to mention um, from the last meeting, the, this one, two, three, four, what defines a conflict of interest. I took that from the town's existing conflict of interest policy mm -hmm. so that it matched. Yeah. So those are the four situations that are in our existing policy mm -hmm. and I felt that it was important that they're consistent. So one, two, three, four probably isn't what you saw last time, but it's directly from our existing conflict of interest policy. So the, the only question I had about that is that that makes the same thing exist in two places. So when you update one, you need to update the other. And we just need to be mindful of that in the yeah. future instant. Yeah. Like, whereas you can, you know, you can just refer to, yeah. you have to follow the town's conflict of interest yeah. and, I mean, and that attach is, it. That is true. That, um, but you could eliminate all of saying that. And I mean, it's a pretty basic her. conflict of interest anyway, it's not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not really, a, I, I, I think it's okay only because the odds of that policy getting updated soon are a lot less likely. If it was like a financial policy maybe, those get updated more often. So I think it's okay to leave because the likelihood of that getting updated is slim to none, I, I make the motion we uh, approve the sale of real estate policy. Second. Uh, discussion? Good. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item 10, select board discuss pedestrian bridge project. Um, you want me, I can, I can discuss this. So we had, uh, 
we had put it out to bid for a second time. And uh, the response was um, not great. One, one bid. One bid. Time. And one of the ones we had the previous round. We didn't get anybody new. And so even, despite the fact that we did have new people, we reached out, we advertised, we reached out, we got new people to come to the site meeting. The numbers are big. They're bigger than our budget. Mm -hmm. We're a little extended already on this project. And um, when we, the, uh, who are we? Are we the bridge committee? We're the team. Uh, team uh, the team that's been working on the bridge. Max. That's the oh. group. Well, without the SE group, though, we yeah, Max, the And we decided that we, well, we could, it, it just becomes insurmountable. Because even though the gap is not huge, it's not insurmountable. But for this building season, yeah. it feels insurmountable because the time you can get work in the river is only July 1 through September 1. October 1. October 1. But October 1 means you only have August and September. Mm -hmm. And we don't have anybody on board yet. And we have to go find some money first. And so it just doesn't seem realistic that we can do that this year. And also at the same time, our town staff is managing all these other flood-related projects that weren't anticipated when this was going up. So what our bridge team felt was, we still want to do it. We're going to do it. We're still going to do it, but we're, we're not going to do it this year. I think it totally makes sense. My only, I only have two questions about it. One is, we've already waited. This, already this is like my, big, my big first project at the select board member. So we've already waited however long that is. Can we? Can we keep those two big pots of USDA no. funds? Okay. Not. We're going to deobligate. Okay. So yeah. then that. So if we deobligate those, then that puts us at and I don't know seven hundred in the shortfall, right? We're, we're going to talk to our. We're going to schedule a meeting. Our community development coordinator is working on getting all of our funders in the same room, and we're going to schedule that meeting probably for the week of the twelfth. And uh, have that conversation on our, our strategy on what we need to do with the funding. Because what we ideally what we want is we want all our funders to understand that we're still doing the project, which just isn't feasible for us to do it this year. So how can they? How can we keep their support without creating problems on their end by hanging on to this money that's already old? Well, wouldn't it also make sense to wait until, which might be a really long ways from now, but if we're redoing the entire corridor of downtown, wouldn't we potentially have to remove the bridge to do that? So, I mean, that's a pretty no-brainer argument that this is we kind of have to wait. The, the retaining wall has to be fixed first. Yeah. Well, it would just yeah. get in the way. It would just get in the way of that bigger, more important project, right? That's what we also talked yeah. about that too. Yeah. Yeah. But hopefully, they understand that, and and we're not even sure. I mean, we might need a we need a, might need a longer bridge spec because right. that bank is starting to give way mm -hmm. over there. Yeah. Right. Certainly, change. So. Okay. So you don't need a motion. We're just gonna no. This is just an update. Just that unfortunately, we're working on it. We're work yeah, Unfortunately, we're still working on it. Years, three years. Four. 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 October twenty twenty. So four years. All right. I guess if there's a positive spin on this, it's that if we um, if we wait until after the the river work is done, put the bridge in, we have high confidence that that bridge is going to last. If we'd already somehow managed to put the bridge in last oh, year, right. we'd be it might be in a whole yeah. different place. Might, yeah, it might. Be. Or if we were in the middle of the construction. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Could have been a bigger mess. So, so, so yeah, it is what it is. yeah, that's just what it is. Sure. All right. Select board reports. I have some good news. Yay! Yay. I was get I got an email today from the Vermont Arts Council and the townhouse has received the cultural facilities grant that will support um, the uh, the lift and the Yay. accessibility. Oh, that's so great. It's mm -hmm. have it's like fourteen, almost fifteen thousand. Awesome. So that's less from our our programming money that we'll have to spend on the lift. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So that's good news. Yeah, that's Ooh. awesome. That's great. I just have a quick one. The um, Equity Committee is working with the Vermont Community Foundation to put together an application um, for, uh, so the Vermont Community Foundation has a grant available only to communities that are part of the IDEAL program, which Hardwick is one of them. Um, and so what we're looking at is doing uh, a grant program where we're basically um, going to be working with community partners to help them be more equitable and inclusive. Um, more about that later, I just wanted to let you know that we're working on that. Um, and then I also went very briefly, <laughs> because of Milo, but I was there, um, the East Harvick uh, brainstorming session last week was awesome. There was for better connections. For better connections. Better connections. Um, there was a huge turnout. I think everybody was really happy about it. Um, so I think that's like, would be something really, really good um, and important for East Harvick. So. Great. Other select board reports? Any new business? I have one thing just. Um, you can spread the word to all of the communities within the town um, that when they want to hire people to do work, um, they really should communicate with our office first because what's happening is I receive an invoice and then I'm trying to chase down W9 and insurance and a non-employee work agreement. I know. Da, 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 da. <laughs> so it's just. Um, you know, it's it's really helpful on our end to not have to chase that down after the fact because, and, yeah. And they hire people that should have and insurance. Right, and that's the other thing is because we've actually had people where they, they did the work and I was unable to get insurance because their insurance company said, well, we don't insure them for that type of work, so we can't right. give you a certificate. So what happens? We pay workers' comp on what we paid them. Yeah. <laughs> So, and then it's um, also, did we go through the proper procurement to hire a contractor? Yeah, and I mean, some of them are really small, but anything, if you've got a sole proprietor or an LLC, if we pay them more than $600, we have to send them a 1099, which means I need all of that stuff. So um, that's all I ask, just to let us know you're working with somebody before the fact just so we can get it. Just make a little when they come at budget time. I think a lot of them probably don't recognize Right, and, and I'm not like, it's just, I'm not trying to be mean about it, no. it's just that that's the reality. Well, it's just, it just again, creates a lot of extra It's something work. else you're doing that creates more work. It just stuff. creates more work, like trying to chase it down after the fact. Really good. So, and sometimes, like I said, if we can't get it, then we end up paying workers' comp mm -hmm. on those amounts. I have an old business. Old business. Wait, are we still in new business? Oh, new business? I think we should make another announcement about the jobs that are open uh, at the Yellow Barn. Yes. Um, Great idea. Yeah. Oh. The, the, for Cabot, Cabot anyway, they the said to go, to, to, their, <laughs> to go to their website. Yeah. Right? Is yeah. that what she said? I think she said it's posted on the Vermont job site. It's Indeed. Posted on, Indeed. It's posted uh, at cabotcreamery.com. Um, they're looking so for people their staff in, right here in Hardwick, but and also, also other locations. Yeah. Uh, and and just in general, um, so we did this site visit immediately prior to this meeting, and that project is committed to creating at least 25 new jobs. So, and this is... And this is like August ones. 15 is when they're, they're planning opening. to open. So that side of it, in the, in the Yellow Barn itself. That retail space. So they're they're getting all ramped up. Uh, we also saw um, Corey and uh, I see from um, CAE was there and told us what told us about what they're doing towards us around their side of the facility and you know they're they're growing as well. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of moving food around mm -hmm. to from the people who grow it to the people that eat it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so now. So now all business. The two culverts at uh, Target Farms is there a cost estimate on the solution? Not a blank check, I would. Um, yeah, it was a, it's emergency work, but we can do uh, not to exceed. Uh, I just, it's a good point. We're way upside down on that project already. Mm -hmm. 
continue to go upside down and it could be picked up. I mean, putting it down with Hobbits is a project. It's not, I mean, being able to do it right, I'm not, I'm, that's yeah, yeah, not yeah. a concern. But it's a lot of work to do it right. Okay. And that's, again, the money we're going to be sitting on for... We're not going to be ever get that money back. Now. Yeah, we will. Yeah, we will. Oh, because it's a new project. Yes, it's, it's a new disaster. <laughs> See, yes, sir. No, we'll get it. Once the declaration. No, but I mean, yeah, she'll take care of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Whoops a daisy. Yeah, it does. Error we made. Uh, Jesus, there is some good coming out of that. I don't think we made any errors. No, but you know what I'm saying. That was, but you know what I'm saying. So there's a silver lining. But uh, we will do, um, I think we need to, do a retroactive contract with a cost not to I mean, just keep an eye on it, because it's a big project. It's it is. A, it's, it's important. I think we ought to leave it that way forever, just so you know once it's in. <laughs> Drag our feet on three places. Well, we just approved that engineering. We, uh, yeah, well, we need to do it, but we, don't have, we certainly don't have to rush into it now. That would be, that'd be the, yeah. the other golden line of this, this temporary fix, is it's going to be a temporary fix that we'll, we, can live with. We'll, we can live with for a summer or two before we have to put the new bridge down. Yep. So yeah, it's going to be probably I just have one next summer. Yeah. Piece of old business. I know it's like kind of last on our minds. It doesn't have to be a conversation tonight, but we talked uh, a few months ago to the library about their contingency and where they are in their budget. And now they're getting closer. For, I mean, it seems like their construction is going well. I'm just curious okay. if we can, I mean, Seems like the library is building actively. I'm just curious. I'm just thinking a little mm -hmm. bit, like if we're, if there's a budget update on that. Because at the last, at, right fast. at the last meeting, they were waiting on a grant. I don't know if they got that grant or not, and they were kind of already at their contingency. So I'm just wondering where they are because I don't want to get hit with a surprise if possible. I don't know if we can Jesus just ask. I have it. Um, we don't need, I know it's like last time, but. I, I usually try to attend one of their construction meetings. Um, You've been busy. Um, so once busy. a month, but we can. We it can, doesn't have to be them visiting. It could just be well, literally I mean, like. No, we can figure it out. We can, I know what we have left for funds. I haven't seen a requisition in a while, so I'm expecting a really big one. Yeah, yeah. But we have all of the CDS funds, the 600,000. So like the next requisition, I bet will be. 800,000 to a million, but we have 600,000 in CDS funds. They have, I think, 150 left in the building fund. Um, so we, we're not there yet, but they should hear about that grant really, really soon. Um, it's beyond shovel ready. It's like 70% done. So yeah, there really isn't, in. There isn't a reason <laughs> that they shouldn't get the grant, but the Department of Libraries is just it's a staffing issue. They've been, they basically don't have anybody to administer the grant. Yeah. And they finally hired somebody, and it kind of sounds like there's some inexperience factors there. And so it's taking a really long time to get the approval. Um, I'm just a little bit worried if we have a requisition that's 1.2 million and we only have 750 in the pot, that's yeah. putting us back 300. So, and we're not going to take it, I mean, they're working on it, which is great, but. Um, it would just be nice to know kind of where we're at just so we can be prepared if we need them to be. Then Riyadh will be part owners of the library. <laughs> <laughs> nothing wrong with that. You, you say that. I'm not going to go there. Okay. Harvey, can you give us any uh, insight? I know that you interviewed a HEB candidate. Have you, they only have one that they're interviewing? Or are they? I think they have three. They get to be yeah, so I went to that too. So they've had, um, I believe they've had more than a dozen applications come in. Really? They're treating it not as, this is the deadline, but it's rolling. So they're yeah. just taking everything as they, as they come in. They interviewed, uh, first interviewed a couple people, and they brought somebody back for a second interview, which was what we attended. Mm -hmm. um, so it's moving forward. Yeah, I thought it went well. I mean, if they had that many candidates, if they were half of them were qualified, that's, yeah. that's still in today's market. No, it, it any knows. job, especially a job at that level. Yeah, it's, no, it's encouraging that there were a lot of applications and that, um, you know, it felt like they're looking beyond just like basic qualifications and they're looking for who we really want. 
Well, I think they, we, they need to find who they really want. And they have a huge focus on the, the board of commissioners has a huge focus on um, uh, public relations. And um, I think that the themes I heard were public relations being forward looking and planning for our power system so that um, you know we, we keep up because there are a lot of changes happening now. There's a lot of electrification and um, you know, maintaining resiliency. Oh, the other big thing was recruiting uh, staff and getting the and, and adding to the organization at the management level. I think they're all they're focused on all the right things as they as they go through this hiring process. Sorry, one more yeah. business. Um, I see that. The, have there been other inquiries about the um, other point drop in August of 2025? because the uh, downtown partnership would like to take that open slot and do a coin drop to support events downtown. Okay. You want to warn it? Yeah, you want to put it as an agenda item at the next meeting? Or? I don't know, whatever we need to do. I mean, it's we'll kind of in there. the hat and there wasn't anything else. Yeah, so. we probably should just put it on the agenda yeah. for next okay. meeting. Yeah. But nobody, nobody else has come. Yeah. Nope. August yeah. 2025, that's what's still open. Right. Yeah, okay. August 2025. Yeah, um, there's some new business and something to think about uh, for cash flow stuff. Um, we have a blasting project going on and some crushing um, and creating more material for construction projects up at the pit. Um, I'd like to get authorization to uh, use the proceeds from the sale of real estate at Cary Road for processing materials at the pit. I would like to make a motion that we use those funds for the operation of the pit for a block. You know, that way we well, the crushing so. alone though, 575 a cubic yard, like that's we're the gonna blasting. Up. That's blasting. Oh, that's blasting is what I meant. Yeah. Blasting. Right. So that's the blasting and then it's uh, what, it, what was it, six, uh, five or five for the crushing? I, I looked it up the other day. So That's for crushed gravel. Oh, yeah. okay. So, so it's probably going to be a little bit more. Right, but that okay. gravel and sand are in our budget already. Yes, gravel and sand are in our budget. In our budget. Yeah. Right, we, have, we do, we do 60000 for gravel. And last year we spent, well, we spent all of that, but specifically on crushing, we spent 30. Spent half of our... Mm -hmm. Crushing, so um, so we'll be able to use some of our crushing budget for crushing of stone, but we need some cash flow and some money budgeted for blasting. Right, that's so, what I'm saying. That sounds like a great use of funds. Do we have a purchase and sale agreement with those properties? Uh, the one. Uh, Carry Road, we are, it's in the water, so we're yeah. drafting it up. The so other one probably won't. The other one, we won't have a purchase. Yeah, Jeff saw me today, he's ready to write a check. He's just waiting. Well, we gotta wait for the third Well, yeah, but he's yeah. ready to go. Yeah. yeah. So, so then, um, so it's coming, I it's, just wondered. I yeah, guess so that was our point, point, is using that 75,000 from the real estate for the blasting and stuff for the pit, because that's, because we don't really have Right. Money a budget in, our, in our budget for it otherwise so that would be a really smart use of those funds that'd be great mm -hmm. create a lot of like, much needed material for our roads so yeah. moved or whatever okay and then do you, do you want a motion on that or so basically to use the proceeds of the carry road yeah. for lasting crushing right the operation of the operations of the yeah that's the core i'm just going to bang my only question is we have to wait 30 days anyway. We still have like 15 days. Can we just make it an agenda item for our next meeting? Because yeah. we're not gonna be, we're not gonna get yeah. the cash till after that anyway. Yeah, why well, let's yeah. not spend it before it's in the bank. <laughs> but I wanna just put that in your yeah. that's, like, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, cases we're, that we're in hopes that so. we're gonna be able to utilize a great deal of this initial blast for FEMA work in the mm -hmm. next year. 
Well, so we're going to be keep reversing and keep going. Uh, uh, well, yeah, but yeah, that, that would be seed money. That 75 will be a uh, seed the, money. The few areas that we were able to put stain at on our back roads, they held up. I know. They held up yeah. a lot better. Yeah, so we're going in the right direction. Yeah, um, we're in good shape. I yeah. at, I, so you guys don't know, I've been out there working. So I'm working with getting some stuff out of come on way. We run out a lot of crushed gravel mm -hmm. to this year that's basically material that was left laying around that I've been yeah. Yeah. So collecting we're up and getting ready yeah. to crush so that as well as water control and access roads that you can drive on that and stuff. Yeah. Do we have a recommended field trip with this? I would love to do a site visit. It's a gorgeous piece of property. There's a couple of ponds on it. Um, I got that road we just stayed up to the top today. Do we have any indication if, um, if we're, when we're able to blast, if we'll be able to make a stay map product that will be comparable to what we buy? You will, definitely, yeah. absolutely, once yeah. you get it. You know, that involves the next step, which is getting the pressure. Yeah, yeah. 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 But we'll sort the stone once it blasts and you yeah. sort it yeah. and you classify it and then a lot of the bigger stuff we'll use and then yeah. great. And I'll uh, honestly it'll probably be next year before we crash the edge. Sure. Because sure. because right now we have, a lot, of, we have right. a lot of use for just rocks right now. Yeah. And then we're gonna have a pile of bank run or uh, crush on gravel. Yeah. The next spring we'll be crushing ledge, not gravel. Right, beautiful. That's where we want to get. That's uh, It's beautiful. Who am I signing? The real estate policy from our Oh, real estate policy. And then, so is, is this still a new business? Yep. We have, <laughs> uh, well, we're we we're, know, we're new, <laughs> new and old business. <laughs> okay, I just hoping want to, to adjourn. I but. just want to say, to, in closing, that um, I appreciate all the, the recognition from the select board and the town manager's office. I want to recognize my staff. I want to recognize Casey Rowell, our business manager, for all the hard work that she's put in, Amanda Fecto, um, and Kristen Leahy. They've all stepped up big time for me. Um, I'm lucky to work with this team of women. Um, Tracy Martin, you know, Tanya in Alberta. Everybody's working hard in our office, and I appreciate coming to work every day and seeing their faces and their positive attitudes. So. We're lucky. Thank you. Great. Yeah. Yeah. No. We definitely. Yeah. You know, they hardly ever complain about you. And the road <laughs> crew. And the road crew. We have a solid road crew. How's our new guy? New guy. Temporary guy is doing good. I'm hoping to do a um, waiting for this. See if we get any applications. Then we'll do a formal interview and hopefully. So he's temporary. Yeah. Interested in full time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the police department. Well. We got a great little community here. Let's keep it strong. Yeah. Awesome. Keep the hard and hard with. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <I'm not laughs>